Okay, so polarization. Um, this is one of the main things that um, when we're talking about the basics, you, you have to understand how polarization works. Now, I'm able to tell you this a little bit more pedagogically because we've figured out a lot. Um, so what we now know is that these charge carriers are mostly electrons in most cases. Um, and what's really going on is that you are taking electrons out of atoms. Um, so this is a very, very simplified model of the, the atom where you have a, um, a nucleus in the center and you have a cloud in, um, in the surrounding area. Um, and it's distributed around the, um, it's distributed around the nucleus. Um, and what you're actually doing when you, um, if you, so if you have a larger um, atom where you have more than one proton or neutron, you're going to have more electrons in the electron cloud. When you have polarization, you can, well, you can do one of two things. If you have, if you are creating an ion, you're pulling electrons out of that cloud. Um, but if you have polarization, you are just distorting the cloud slightly. So the positively charged nucleus will shift one way and the electron cloud will shift the other way. And by having that shift, you're actually able to, um, counteract some of the forces from other charges um, so that there is there's less net force in the system. Um, so when you induce polarization, so here you have the um, you have some positively charged object. So maybe you rubbed uh, you rubbed your cloth against some plastic rod and then you remove the cloth so now it's all got a, it's got a bunch of positive charges on the rod and then you move it near a conducting sphere so in metals that electron cloud is actually distributed around most of the entire metal you can think of it as very few electrons belong to any particular nucleus um, and so when you move that rod close to um, to the metal electrons can move freely in the in a metal approximately so that positively charged rod is going to push the positive charges in the metal away and pull on the electrons. So you will end up um, with, an, with a distortion in the distribution of charges on the conductor. And so there's a few different ways that you, you can do this. So if you have... Um, if you have an object which it's hard to, if you have something where it's hard to pull an electron away from its nucleus, um, like most um, you know, wood, plastic, most of the things that are not metals, then when you pull, put that charged rod near the object, you're still going to keep the electron and the, nu the nucleus associated with each other, but you're going to pull the electron towards the positive charge. Or if you have a negatively charged rod, you're going to push the electron away. Um, if you um, if you have something like a metal, the separation between charges um, is even greater. And it's important for notation, for instance, when you're doing your um, your homework problems, if the electron is still bound and you're just polarizing the, the atoms, draw a circle around the two of them. Okay, so you can actually use um, this induced charge to create a permanent charge on something. So in to do this, you can take two conducting spheres or any type of conductor, they're, they're touching and you bring something charged nearby and you're going to end up because the when the two conductors are touching the electrons can move freely between the two of them so um, what's going to happen is that the electrons are going to get pulled towards the positive charge and the positive the um, positive charge is going to get pushed away what's really happening is of course 
what's moving in the conductor is the electrons. So you're pulling the electrons over to this side. Um, and then if you separate the two spheres while the um, while the charge is still nearby, you can no longer get electrons traveling between the two of them. So you end up with more negative charges on this um, sphere and more positive charges on that sphere. Um, and because the charges can move around freely on uh, in the conductor, um, you end up with more negative charges on this side and more positive charges on that side because now the two spheres are attracted to each other and the um, positive charges in one sphere want to move close to the um, negative charges in the other. And you can do this even without conductors. So if you have um, a path to ground, um, you will end up getting, you can get electrons, um, either gain electrons from ground or lose electrons to ground. Um, so you take your conducting sphere and you move something charged nearby it. And then you create a connection to ground. So this gives you some place for the electrons to go. Um, and then you remove the, the connection. You're removing some path for the electrons to go to, to travel down. Um, so there's any any excess charge you have on the sphere is now stuck. And then if you remove the the um, charged object, you're going to be left with uh, a charged um, conductor.